Hi, this is Karen Greenhouse, and today I just want to show you how to access the pictures and videos that exist on the CG50 and also on the CG10 prism calculators from Casio. Some people don't realize they're even there, or when they get there, they're not quite sure what the difference is between the folders. So I just kind of want to go through the process. So I'm working with the new CG50 prism, but if you have the CG10, same basic idea. You've got your main menu, so we're going to arrow down till we get to the picture plot. So here it is right here, so just arrow over, execute to get that open. So the first thing you come to is a folder that says Casio. So you want to open that. You can either hit F1 or you can hit ex execute. So we're going to do that. And now you have two different folders. And the, the difference between them is one is uh, movies that uh, you can move manually or auto, opt, auto, auto, automatically. <laughs> That's the word, sorry. And those allow you to actually see something actually happening. I'll show you one in a little bit. Um, and plot points and actually see real world action and the mathematics and the graphs that it can possibly create. And then there's the P, which is for the pictures. So let's just scroll down to the P first and let's just open it. So what this is, is all the pictures that already come preloaded with Sketchpad. And you'll notice there's just, I'm just using my arrow here, there's a ton of them. And each one has a different uh, purpose. It may be a great one to use if you're working with quadratics or if you're working with symmetry, those types of things. So, for example, let's say you want to work with... Uh, da, da, da. So I'm going to do the Ferris wheel first, right? So here's a really nice picture of Ferris wheel. And there's lots of things I could do here because I've got a lot of different types of curves. So I could be looking at just this curve or possibly this curve. So doing some function work. I could also be looking at circles and rotational symmetry. So that's one thing I could do with this picture. And when you get the picture up, you'll notice that a grid is on there. You can move the grid up or down if you want to actually kind of put it where you want on your screen. So that's with the arrows. If you click options, you'll notice that there's a lot of things you can do. You can plot points on it. So if I click plot, I can, let's say I want to follow the curve here. So I'm going to arrow over. I'm going to use this one thing and hit execute and it plots a point. And then I can kind of arrow over again, plot another point. So this is a really nice real world application of where we might see these functions that we've been working with. So roller coasters, especially that summer's about to start here, these would be great. And I could keep going and follow the whole curve, but you can put as many points as you want. And then once you, um, oops, let me exit out of that and go back here. Once you have several points plotted, and the nice thing is when you, then you list, list those points that you plotted, and then you can get into creating the function that goes with it using however it is you want the students to work with it. So lots of things you can do just from these pictures and there's lots of different pictures that you can um, work with. And I'm, I'm hitting here F6 to show you all the different things that you can do. This fade in, one nice thing is eventually one, maybe you don't want the picture anymore, you can change the opacity of it and you'll see that the picture is fading and my plot is coming out. So this might be after you've actually plotted a function you want to see how well it matches you can kind of fade out that picture which is a nice feature so we're gonna go back to our nice thing and I just moved my emulator here so let's exit out of there so lots of things you can do and if you want to go to a different picture oops I don't want to save it I want to go to a different picture so let's exit out and I'm going to hit option I can hit file and I can choose open which is going to bring me back to my folder of pictures and movies and I can go back and find a new picture, right? So it's fun to explore these pictures because each one would be appropriate for different classes depending on what you're looking at. Um, for example, this amusement one, this is another Ferris wheel without a roller coaster behind it. So here you might really want to be focusing on, you know, rotations and what's the angle between these cars and how many cars are there and what does that have to do with the rotation? How do they not hit each other? There's lots of things you could do with this. And it's a different type of Ferris wheel picture than the one that we saw previously. So lots of options, lots of pictures. Uh, so that's something you can do with pictures. Now let's go back to that other folder. So I'm going to hit exit. Why is it? I'm sorry, options. I'm going to go back to file. And I'm going to go to open. 
and it's going to bring me back to the Casio folder. So when I hit execute, execute or open, either one, this time I'm going to go to this top folder. So the bottom folder with the P is pictures, lots and lots of pictures. And again, it's fun to explore. We'll see what those different pictures are. But if you open this top folder, it's also pictures. It's not quite as many. So if we narrow down, we have not quite as many. So, right. But these are really great videos where you can either watch something happening and then talk about the kind of graph and move it manually and talk about the kind of graph and you can then actually plot things as they move. So let's just go into my favorite one is obviously jumping because of the jumping fish. And so you have fish, right? It doesn't look like anything too exciting, but we can then, and again, you can move where your axes are if you want to, so I'm just going to leave it where it was. Um, but if I go to my options, and hit here F6, you'll see that I get to this uh, option to play. So we're gonna hit F2 and you can either do it auto or manual. And I'm gonna do, just because of the speed, it does mess things up sometimes when I'm recording and then I do a video, but let's just do it manually first. And all that means is if I hit execute, I'm gonna see my fish, no, not execute, sorry about that. I'm hitting the arrows. I see my fish jump. So you could be running this automatically where you're going to see it and you can think, wow, what kind of path is that fish taking, right? Where is he going? How long does it take him to get there? What kind of arc, what kind of graph might that be? And so that's exciting, right? So, but when we go back, let's hit exit. There we go. And hit our F6 again. Let's say this time I want to actually plot the fish as he moves, right? So it's going to still move for me, but this time I'm going to plot the points as he moves. So let's kind of arrow over to where Mr. Fish is right now. And one thing when you're working with students, you might want to tell them, you know, if you're going to plot points on something, make it the same place. So the fish, I'm going to just use the fish's kind of nose. So I've got this arrow there. I'm going to hit X and it marks my spot and notice because I'm in a movie, not just a static picture, it moves to the next location and I can then move my arrow up. And again, remember, I'm trying to stay on his nose. So we're going to just to be consistent. So now I'm going to plot this second point and it moves again. So I'm going to go up, plot the next point. And again, you can keep doing this till you get the fish into the thing and it's going to follow it. So this is a really nice uh, application because you see something happening and you plot the points as it happens and then you can really make conjectures before he moves or after you see the video and then you can plot the points see how close you are and again once you are plotting those points uh, I'm just sitting here you can list the ones that you've plotted and think about you know how am I going to make a function that goes with that all these things that you can do and then apply and see how they work Right. So this is a really nice feature of, of the prism calculators that you have this picture plot um, capability and also these kind of movies that where you plot things as they're moving along. Really nice real world applications and again, relatively easy to get into. So let me just go back to open. You just go into the picture plot, come to this folder and choose whether you want a static picture that you can work with or if you want to choose from some of the movies that work. So this is a lot of fun. Have fun exploring great real world applications to use with your students.